Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at The Curse of Brimstone. Now this is part of the New Age of Heroes from DC. This is issue one. Now this is brought to us by Philip Tan and Justin Jordan, storytellers with Justin Jordan doing the dialogue. Rain Burrito, colorist. Wes Abbott, letterer. Tan Burrito, cover. Brian Cunningham, group editor. Jessica Chen, editor. Now this put, takes place in York Hill, it says it's a coal mining town, or it used to be. So I assume since it's mountainous, it's probably in West Virginia or Tennessee or Kentucky or maybe Southern Ohio, somewhere like that. Uh, now I have to say that I picked this up because I thought the cover looked cool. Uh, I really didn't have too much interest in it beyond that, but it was only $2.99. I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. The art is kind of a mixed bag because the settings look really cool. The you know the background is really well done. I really like the architecture look of it. Pretty much every Everything except the people is done really, really well. But the artist has some trouble with faces, which seems to be a real common problem these days. Artists don't take anatomy classes for whatever reason. Maybe they're self-taught. Maybe they're just... The faces and arms look really, really weird throughout the book. Some of that's stylistic, I understand. but And there is a distinct manga influence here in the unnatural facial expressions. Like when he's talking to this old lady, he does that cutesy thing where his eyes are closed and he's smiling that you see in anime or in manga but no I, I, it doesn't really work for me i think the anatomy looks really weird uh there's a scene where the police officer's leaning forward and reaching for his gun which first of all is an unnatural way to reach for your gun and his shoulder looks like it's dislocated some of that is very stylistic but the plot line itself is actually incredibly cliche okay I can buy into some of it because there are certain horror cliches that are going to come up. A dying poor town, their dad's a drunk who's been laid off or disabled, whatever. And he loaned a bunch of their money out to uh, one of his friends who got hurt with a chainsaw, so they're going to be short this month. And an unknown stranger comes into town. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Driving a black car, and of course he works for a specific agency, which of course is Satan! Or probably Neuron based on DC Comics history. But the elements, aside from being incredibly cliche, do not work well. It has the same effect of like Jeepers Creepers, if you ever saw that movie. The first like 10 minutes was actually pretty good, and then it just got really stupid really fast, and we have the same problem here. Now, when a police officer confronts the guy asking for license and registration, the guy, of course, is some evil agent of the devil, so he freezes the cop in like ice shards, which makes no sense. That is not an effective way to begin the story. You want this guy to just be like, these are not the droids you're looking for, and the cop goes, on his way mind controlled briefly and, or just forced to forget or the guy just shows him a license and registration and, and he's allowed to go on his way whatever the case may be you progress the story that way and make him seem slightly more innocuous initially so when he picks the kid up when the kid's car breaks down uh, joe chamberlain's the kid's name he gets in the car and says that he'll do anything to make his town memorable, to make people care about it again. And of course, it's a clever ruse by the guy wearing an upside down mask, which has a smiley face on it, which looks kind of dumb. Uh, he gets turned into brimstone, which is a fire creature, of course, and uh, he's going to burn the whole town down, apparently. So this is probably a redemption story where he's going to burn his hometown down and then rebel against the agents of evil or whatever. But yeah the story just didn't work for me it was like half a dozen bad movie cliches all jammed together the dialogue was okay for part of it uh, and then other times it was just downright stupid there was way too much talking for most of the book too it was a lot of setup and no payoff at all on this issue it, it ends on a cliffhanger with him turning into brimstone and going into burn the town all the build-up is really just about this kid being kind of a loser he doesn't have a job he doesn't have an education and he's been arrested half a dozen times and of course the local cops hate him because he's a bad boy but he's really got a heart of gold no it's it's disappointingly bad i had a hard time caring about these people because it was like i've seen this movie before so i'm gonna say this one's probably gonna be a miss uh i i can't recommend this issue and i had to look 
look it up, but Justin Jordan, he did the dialogue on Sideways, which I also hated and thought was cliched and garbage. So I'm sensing a pattern here. I'm going to have to say that this is just a miss because it is so trite and cliche. It really lacked any nuance or anything new to it. It didn't add an interesting twist on the concept. It didn't really have anything to offer that was new. And it, it's... A forgettable issue very boring uh, some of the arts pretty good I think the artist has a lot of potential but some anatomy classes need to be taken even with the stylistic nature of the art some of the work really like the faces especially really needs work I would say it, it was kind of amateur hour they're trying really hard to have like a weird mix of Tim Bradstreet and an anime from like 1985 I would say this is a pass for me but I'd be willing to give the artist a little more credit than and with the writing, the plotting is just, this is lazy, lazy, lazy work. So that'll do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Please be sure and hit like, share, and subscribe. And we hope to see you on the next one.